This is the Logitech Chorus, a brand new audio accessory from Logitech specifically designed for the Quest 2. In this video, I'll show you what comes in the box, I'll go over the specs, the installation, and most importantly, tell you if this accessory is worth your time and money. Full disclosure, Meta sent the Chorus over for me to review, but as always, I'll give you my honest opinion on the device and its functionality. So without further ado, let's dive in. Starting with the price, the Logitech Chorus will retail for 99 US dollars, 89 British pounds, when they launch on the 2nd of September. It's a product designed to provide a richer audio experience to your Quest 2 games with these off-ear Valve Index style speakers. When we get inside the box, we find the Chorus speakers themselves, and I would say they don't look or feel cheap. They have some weight to them as the speaker casings are made of metal and in total the pair weigh around 182 grams. These metal casings contain BMR speakers. BMR stands for Balance Mode Radiator and these are the same style speakers found in both the Valve Index and the HP Reverb G2. And we already know how good they sound so my expectations here are pretty high. The only branding on the Chorus speakers is this small Logi logo on the side and they match the off-white color of the Quest 2 perfectly. Installation is a breeze as the Chorus speakers simply attach to the headset by sliding them over the head strap arms. But here comes the first problem. They're specifically designed to fit over the arms of the original material head strap that ships with the Quest 2 or the official Elite strap and Elite battery strap. Now this straight away limits the use of this product as many people ditched the original material head strap as it's uncomfortable and they avoided the official elite head straps as they proved to be unreliable and were susceptible to breaking. So if you're like me and you use a third party head strap from the likes of Bobo VR or Kiwi Design, then this product isn't gonna work for you. I really think Logitech missed a trick here not having a more universal mounting system to accommodate a wider range of head straps, especially as there's so many options available on the market right now. While I don't recommend the official head straps from Meta, for the purposes of this review I'll be using the official Elite battery strap throughout the rest of this video. So moving on, interestingly the Chorus doesn't utilize the Quest 2's 3.5mm audio jack and instead uses USB-C for both audio and power. The Chorus doesn't contain any batteries, it's just a case of plugging it in and it automatically powers on and switches audio to the speakers, which is a nice touch. Now, if you're using the official Elite battery strap like the one I have here, or you want to play and charge at the same time, the Chorus does have a USB-C port underneath, which can pass through power directly to the headset. But here comes problem number two. This USB-C pass-through port is just for power. It won't pass through data, which means you can't use a link cable to connect your Quest 2 to a PC to play PC VR content when using the Chorus. If you want to use the Chorus and play PC VR content, you'll have to use AirLink or Virtual Desktop to play wirelessly over your home network. I feel like this is a huge oversight on behalf of Logitech as not everyone has a fast home network and a lot of people rely on link cables to play PC VR content. This oversight just limits the use of this product even further. These two problems aside though, let's move on to an important question. How do they actually sound? Well, for my testing, I played Beat Saber, Contractors and Walkabout Mini Golf. Starting with Beat Saber, the chorus sounded great and on par with what I'd experienced when playing with the Valve Index. The bass and mids were much more prominent and punchy and you could really crank them up to 11 and have a great time. I crudely recorded some clips so you can hear the difference between the Quest 2 stock audio and the audio from the chorus. One major benefit of the off-ear design of the chorus when playing intensive games like Beat Saber is that your head doesn't tend to get as hot when compared to wearing a pair of headphones that fully enclose your ears. So if music rhythm games are your jam, maybe this is something to consider. Moving on to contractors, gunshots sounded much more impactful and hearing enemy footsteps was clearer, giving me a slight tactical advantage. 
One thing to note with the chorus is that you can still hear your surroundings when playing, which might be useful if you have a family and you want to know what's going on around you, but the trade-off is that they'll also be able to hear exactly what you're playing. The audio isn't isolated like it is when wearing a pair of earbuds or headphones. Also, a quick tip I discovered is that if you flip the chorus speakers up, it mutes the game audio so you can have a conversation with someone if you need to. And finally, I played walkabout mini golf with my friend Paradise Decay as I wanted to test if there was any bleed over from the chorus speakers into the Quest 2's microphone. Sitting at a moderate volume, there was no issue. However, at a high volume, my friend could clearly hear himself back when talking. To be fair, this does also happen with the valve index if the volume is high enough. It's just something worth noting if you predominantly play multiplayer games, as this will drive your teammates completely crazy being able to hear themselves back when they talk. The only way to truly isolate this is to wear a pair of earbuds or headphones, which is exactly the reason why traditional gamers use headphones over speakers. So here's my conclusion. The chorus speakers are pretty pricey, but they do feel and sound good. Definitely a huge improvement over the Quest 2's stock audio. However, with the compatibility limited to official head straps and the pass-through being power only, they're honestly difficult to recommend. Another point worth mentioning is that because they're a powered accessory, they will be draining power from your Quest 2 when they're in use. And while I don't know the exact power draw, you can expect a reduction in your Quest 2's playtime after a full charge. Further to this, I discovered a weird bug where if you power on the Quest 2 with the Elite battery strap and chorus connected, the Quest 2 detects the battery strap but shows the battery percentage at 0% regardless if it's fully charged or not, unless you disconnect the USB-C and reconnect it. Maybe this can be resolved with a future software update, who knows. So personally, I'll be going straight back to my favorite head strap and audio combo with the Bobo VR M2 Plus 2 head strap and the SteelSeries 7P headphones. So that's it from me today. I hope you found the video informative and I answered all the questions you had about the Logitech Chorus. If I missed anything, of course, feel free to ask any questions you have in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer as many questions as I can. I'm gonna be heading to Gamescom this week, so keep your eyes peeled on the channel for my upcoming video covering all the VR games and hardware from the show. Until then, take care of yourselves, and as always, I'll see you all on the next one. Cheers.